Hello guys, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. It's cold and wet and damp and minging in Scotland as per usual. But today in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to do some intercooler piping to the RX-7. But first things first, before we get into this video, I just want to show you the latest purchase I've got. I sold the last Rangey, I decided to get myself a new one. So yes guys, got myself a nice Range Rover Vogue autobiography model, top spec, top of the range, absolute beast of a car, a dream to drive, I absolutely love it and it's going to be a great tour to tow this thing to the track. So yeah, I was going to make a video specifically on that car, it's raining, it's minging, I'm not going to bother, we'll get to that some other day I'm sure, but you guys probably want to see more of this. Let's face it, we're all here for tuning and building cars. So yeah, um, since the last guys you've seen it, I've fitted some bits and bobs. I didn't film it all because, uh, you know, it goes some days you don't get enough time. And uh, yeah, I've got the exhaust sitting like that just now, but that's not actually like how it's gonna be. Like, I might have this set up for a drag setup, you know, uh, for at the drag strip itself, but I will be driving this on the street, so I have to have it half simmer. Intercooler is fitted. Uh, oil cooler for the gearbox is fitted, radiator is fitted, you know, everything's all bolted up. I need to put Jubilee clips on that. As you can see, I fabricated all these pipes, just custom, as I usually do. Um, and they come right round the side here. In this video, I'm going to show you guys these ERC clamps. Like, these are fucking really cool. Uh, I love these things. Um, I got them, uh, I bought them from ERC themselves. Um, get this off here. Elite racing components and uh, yeah, just o ring sleeved pieces, sort of similar to Vibrant. Um, and uh, yes, with a one piece quick release, uh, I can pretty much do everything with one hand, like obviously holding a camera. And uh, there, there you go. And at that point, there I could have just taken off my intercooler, simple as that. So, yeah, uh, I made it a spacer from this one because this was two and a half inch and this is three inch uh, piping I'm using. So, uh, I had to make this as obviously a bit of tubing and I cut some slits in it, clamped it down, and I just tested it by welding that on there. Um, this side here is going to be a bit of a challenge because it's so big, like it's massive, it's 83 mil and um, it's only 76 mil, which is three, three inch. So, and welding with a TIG welder and aluminium is a bit of a nightmare. So, uh, yeah. I might have, I was half tempted to make a spacer up on the lathe and then weld the spacer to the, you know, the two pieces, but, you know, whether it's going to save enough time or not, I'm not really sure. Another issue I've got as well is these throttle bodies, if you have too much heat into them and warp them, it melts the plastic gears inside it. So, you know, I'm really going to have to watch there. That's going to be interesting. So now I've got the clamps on. I have got water in the system, yeah, everything's filled up and uh, ready to go. We're almost at the stage and we probably will in this video start this thing up, hopefully. We need to get these pipes and these pipes need to go in there and we need this one to fit to here and that one to fit to there. So uh, a couple of tight, you know, bends and stuff like that, but nothing we can't do, I'm sure. Yeah, there's only one thing for it. We'll just get cracking and uh, I think we'll start off with this side. Yeah, so there we go. Very first one, just tacked in place. I tack it in a few different places because you tend to find these flanges, wiggins, etc. These will warp. Yeah, they very, they will warp. So tack it in a few different places just to try and hold it straight. Yeah, it's the best thing to do for these. So uh, yeah, tacked in place. The welder is uh, acting up as it usually does. So. Uh, I'll do the best I can, um, and uh, yeah, we'll start welding this thing up, let's get to it. Your way, and then I think about myself and I stay. I'm a pretty boss. 
Right, so I have a plan. I've got it all very much balanced up there just now. Um, however, as you can see, there's a gap around the bottom. So that's going to be an absolute nightmare to weld. Um, especially with TIG weld and aluminium. MIG's fine because you can just like clot, like absolutely clot it and steal and it'll fill a hole. TIG's a wee bit different, especially aluminium because it's like water when you're welding. Uh, that might not make sense to a lot of people but people that weld it, if you describe aluminium as water, yeah, it doesn't really give you any signs that it's actually going to go and uh, all of a sudden it'll just go <laughs> it just disappear. So yeah, you have the good eye for it. So my, my, my thought is, I'm going to weld it, I'm going to weld the wee stitch along here I've got some water, and I'm going to dunk it in the water. Yeah, is that going to work? There's only one way to find out, guys. Yeah, let's, let's get to it. Right, so, so far, I've uh, managed to get it welded around the top side, and I've got this big gap at the top here, so... Yeah, that's going to take a lot of aluminium to fill. I was thinking about cutting slots and smacking this down, however, as you guys know, this is cast. Cast doesn't like to bend, it just cracks off, so... Um, yeah, I'm just going to keep at it. I'm doing a little bit, like maybe an inch, and I'm taking it, dousing it, coming back, and it's cold, eh? It's cold now, so... Uh, in between. I'm obviously making sure that it still works in between. <laughs> one of the issues is I'm using 1.6mm tips, however, you know, if I had a thicker tip, it would be much better. But what you can do is, if you get tip in your drill and just spin them up, and then get a set of grips at the end. It's a bit rough, and uh, you guys will be absolutely pissing yourselves laughing, but uh, yeah, that I'll do now is a thicker filler wire, so I can uh, dab in there. Get a little bit more material in there. More material makes it cooler, and uh, yeah tricks in the trade and all that. Well, I don't know if it is. There's probably a lot of welding guys. There's probably guys in the comments just now just going nuts telling me I should be doing it this way, but it's just the way. The way it'll work, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, well, we shall see. I don't want to talk too, too soon. Right, as you guys can see, it's all bolted back up again. Uh, and uh, I'll open this up so I can see all the free flowing. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Just looking absolutely perfect. So, huge, huge body. More than enough for I was needing. You know, three inch piping will flow the 700 horsepower I'm after. Uh, and bearing in mind that's going to be when that engine gets built. Um, but yeah, I'm going to use Chris, Chris Boye block fill. You guys never heard that before. Look into it, it's pretty cool. What I'll do now is I'll go into the car and uh, I'll switch it on and then we better make sure that still works I'll look over the footage and uh, then I'll see if it worked. Right, so pipe is on. As you can see, it's a 90, it's going down. And you know what I love about these clamps? Look at that. That's movement and that is sealed. And that's exactly what you want. Don't get me wrong, I've got a heap of silicon grease on here um, for the O-rings and C's. But these ERC clamps, Elite Racing Components, thank you very much for the shout out for these by the way because, uh, like I say with the last ones, uh, they were going to be fixed, so uh, yeah, check out for a quick release. There we go, some nice pretty welds actually for uh, for me, um, because I'm one of them welders I don't weld often, so um, sometimes I get lucky. That's where we're at now. So now we're going to have to make pie cuts. I hate pie cuts. You guys know I hate pie cuts. I just, I just, they just didn't get on well with me, so um, but unfortunately I'm going to have to make them. So I'll just grab another one of these. Um, they come assembled. You obviously just need to assemble themselves. Uh, well, it's not exactly hard to be fair. Fall apart. Easy peasy. Now, 
Hmm. We're probably going to have to cut it and put it around a bit here. So, I've whipped this absolute monster of a cooler off. And uh, as you can see here, it's still cooling down a little bit. Uh, I've picked on the flange. So, uh, this side here, when I bought this intercooler, I bought it for, I think it was £60, £70. It had a damaged end tank. So, But I'm going to be cutting this off anyway. Oh, yeah! So, uh we have everything all welded on. Nice! I hate pie cuts. Uh, it's more the cutting of them because look at the mess that this machine I use leaves them in. Just, uh, it's a pain in the ass. So, I'm gonna clean this up with the knife and the grinder and uh, yeah. Bloody pie cuts, I hate them. But yeah, everything's uh, looking good, nice and smooth, nice blowing elbows and stuff like that. So. Just need to weld this last piece up here. Uh, I've welded on the end flange. Um, put a wee silicon thing on and uh, see if it fits. So, progress report. Oh, two seconds. I'll wipe your screen. So, progress report. Yeah! We have the piping all the way up. Down here, round here, all the way up here. Shake it all about. And look at that. Plenty play which is good because we need that for obviously the engine moving. I look at people and I wonder all day Who are you and you and I the one in your way And then I think about myself and I stay I'm a pretty boss with all my shit brain waste I'm a freak in the sheets, but I got class. I'm a grab a nice if you want it. Best you ever had, and give it to you. Bye. I am sweating. Yeah, it's all come together eventually, so as you can see right around there, down there, along there, up there, doosh, 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 and we now have all the intercooler pipes on. So, like I said before, you know, plenty of play, and this is good and uh, crucial um, when you're wanting these type of clamps, because you're going to have the engine moving around. So, so that's holding 50 psi. Can't stop my adapter from leaking. It's because these threads are stripped there, eh? but uh, yeah, as you can see by obviously the rest of them. Listen, nothing. Yeah, can't find another Jubilee clip, so we'll just have to leave it at that, I think. But if you guys remember at the start of this video, I said we were going to start this, uh, and if I'm honest with you, it's ready to start, and it would be good for you guys to see the very first start. Now, I don't have, you know, the wide band plugged in or the downpipe made up yet. So, one, it's going to be loud, and two, it's not going to have any lambda control. So, uh, yeah, it's a bit sketch, but we'll see if it at least fires. That would be pretty cool. Um, so, take this off here, and, uh, yeah, I'm going to turn key in a wee minute. Another little issue I've got is fuel pressure. I've not actually got my fuel pressure sender on that thing uh, hooked up yet, so I don't know what fuel pressure I'm at. So I'm just sort of adjusting it to what it's like. Well, I don't know. I'm actually completely guessing with fuel pressure. Um, so I'm probably going to go about there. Yeah, fuck it there. And uh, yeah. The other issue we have is I've not yet got an alternator supply on it, um, so it's not going to charge the um, car up. But I'm all for it. Let's plug this thing in and uh, we'll go into the car and we'll see if it fires up. So let's try this now. We have fuel pump. Guys, 
the beast has a walking has a lie but I'm gonna have to switch it off right now because I need to fill the gearbox full of oil <laughs> oh yes buzzing of that absolute buzzing so uh, yeah what I'm gonna have to do now is I'm gonna have to jack up the car I have to sort out some oil lines underneath because it's going to get to the point where I need to actually put a lot of gearbox oil in. Yeah, I mean, this thing's take like 11 litres or something like that, a lot of oil. So, yeah, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to push it out further. I'm going to jack up the front of the car and, uh, yeah, fill the gearbox oil or sort of fittings it. But anyway, that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed coming along and helping me install this intercooler piping and uh, first start and all that yada yada as well. You guys take care, stay in touch, and uh, we'll catch us in the next video, and hopefully it's an exciting one. <laughs> right, guys, catch us later.